Hi everyone, welcome back to Medition, your trusted medical information channel. I'm Dr. Lin, a board certified allergist and immunologist. In a previous episode, we covered five key facts about Repsidol. The first in class, oral BTK inhibitor, approved for chronic spontaneous urticaria. We discussed what Repsidol is, who it's for, how it works, dosing and administration, drug interactions and contraindications, and its safety profile. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out. It's linked above. Today, we're taking a deeper look with three lesser known but clinically meaningful insights that every patient should know, especially if you're currently taking Repsidol or considering starting soon. These insights may help both patients and doctors better understand where Repsidol fits in the broader management of chronic hives. And if you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe for more science-based medical updates. Now, let's dive in. First, did you know that chronic spontaneous urticaria can have different subtypes? Some patients have allergy-related mechanisms, while others do not. And these differences can affect how people respond to treatment. The good news is that Repsidol has shown consistent efficacy across these variations. In pivotal clinical trials, Repsidol significantly improved itch and hive scores compared to placebo. And these benefits were seen across key patient subgroups, whether patients had high or low baseline IgE levels, with IgE being the allergy-related antibody involved in many allergic reactions, Repsidol showed early and sustained improvement in disease activity, regardless of Ig status. It also demonstrated clinical benefits in both biologic naive patients and those with prior zolar exposure. However, it's important to note that the trials included patients who had previously used zolar, but they did not specifically study zolar non-responders. So while we cannot assume that patients who didn't respond to zolar will definitely respond to Repsidol, it's reassuring to see positive results across diverse populations. In short, Repsidol's effects does not appear to depend on Ig levels or past biologic exposure, making it a broadly relevant option for patients whose hives remain uncontrolled despite antihistamines. As always, the decision between an injectable biologic or an oral pill should be made with your healthcare provider, considering individual benefits, risk, and preferences. Second, many patients wonder, since Repsidol works by blocking Bruton's tyrosine kinase, or BTK, which is also active in B cells, the immune cells that produce antibodies. Could Repsidol reduce normal antibody levels or raise the risk of infections over time? That's an excellent and very reasonable concern because BTK is involved in how B cells mature and communicate with the rest of the immune system. In fact, people born with rare genetic BTK mutations, antibody levels can be extremely low or even absent, leading to serious infections. But here is the reassuring news. That's not what we see with Repsidol. In clinical studies, Repsidol did not cause any meaningful decreases in major antibody types such as IgG, IgA, or IgM. Average antibody levels remain stable over time and stay well within the normal range. None of the mean values drop below normal during treatment period. Even more importantly, infection rates were similar between the Repsidol and placebo groups and did not increase with long-term use. So in summary, Repsidol calms the hives pathway without weakening the immune system. Patients maintain healthy antibody levels and did not experience higher infection risk while on treatment. Third, Repsidol's story doesn't end with a chronic spontaneous urticaria. Several active studies are exploring how it compares with other approved therapies and whether its benefits could extend to other types of hives. 
two major phase 3B trials ongoing right now comparing Refsido with leading biologic therapies. While they are not designed as direct head-to-head -head superiority studies, they will still provide valuable real-world insights. The first trial is a randomized double-blind study comparing Refsido with Dupixent in patients whose hives remain uncontrolled despite antihistamines. The main focus is on early response and onset of action, helping us understand how quickly each therapy begins to relieve symptoms. The second trial is a randomized double-blind study evaluating Refsido versus placebo with Zoli as an active control. This trial includes multiple arms, Refsido for 52 weeks, Zolir for 52 weeks, and placebo groups that later transition to active treatments. The goal is to assess the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of Refsido over 24 weeks compared to placebo, and over 52 weeks relative to Zolir in patients whose hives are not controlled by antihistamines. For patients and doctors deciding between biologic injections like Dupixin or Zolir and an oral option like Refsido, these studies will provide important data on how Refsido compares with the current biologics and help guide more informed, shared decisions about the best treatment approach. But that's not all. Refsido is also being studied in another form of chronic hives known as chronic inducible urticaria. Chronic inducible urticaria refers to hives triggered by physical factors like scratching, pressure, cold, or heat. This randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study is evaluating the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of Refsido in patients whose inducible hives do not respond to antihistamines. This research is especially exciting because up to 30% of patients with chronic spontaneous urticaria also have inducible urticaria. If successful, Refsto may become the first oral medication approved for chronic inducible urticaria, potentially expanding treatment options for people affected by both spontaneous and trigger-induced hives. And there we have it, three important clinical secrets about Refsido that go beyond the basics. It has shown broad efficacy across different patient types, working regardless of baseline IgE levels or prior biologic exposure. It doesn't lower normal antibody levels or raise infection risk, targeting overactive immune pathway without weakening the body's defense. Ongoing studies are comparing Refsido with biologics like Dupixin and Zolder and exploring its use in chronic inducible urticaria, offering hope for many more patients in the future. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts or experience in the comments below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more evidence-based insights right here on Edition. See you next time.